Okay, it's time to finally finish up our quilt. So we are going to need to bind it. So what you will need is a way to trim up the sides of your quilt. So all these sides need to be squared up, trimmed up to the edge of our pretty quilt top. And to do that, I like to use a cutting mat and an acrylic ruler and my rotary cutter. But obviously you can just use a pair of fabric scissors if you like. And then we are also going to have to cut our binding strips. I'm going to use the same fabric I used on the back of my quilt. So I am going to iron this up and we're gonna cut it into strips that are two and a half inches and we are going to sew those together. So let's get started. Okay, so we are gonna line up our acrylic ruler along the edge of our pretty quilt top and we are just going to start cutting. So sometimes I will double check and make sure that um, I don't have the top of the, or the bottom of the fabric uh, rolled over or anything so that I don't miss it. But you're just, honest, all you're gonna do is straighten out this edge here. So I'm just gonna cut along. Sometimes I will trim off some of the top of the quilt if it seems like it's overhanging a little bit just to make sure everything's nice and squared up. So look at how pretty that is. It feels, I, I love this part because it really feels like you're in the home stretch of creating your quilt. You're really starting to see how beautiful it looks because when this batting edge is all on there hanging off, it just doesn't look finished. But when it's all trimmed up, it's really starting to come together and you can feel the end is near of your project. And this is often where I start planning out my next project. And I'm like, okay, this one is done, so what am I doing next? And sometimes I do leave these pins on the edge. So I'm gonna grab that off so I don't try and cut over it. And you're just gonna do this to all of your sides. You're gonna come through and square them up and make it all a nice and even and beautiful. And we're gonna turn this. I keep hitting this chair. I should have moved it out of the way more, but Hopefully you can't hear it too much knocking around. Okay, and you can really tell at this point how much your fabric stretches. Because you'll see little places where it's, it's come out a little more than others. So this is why basting the quilt is so important to try and help keep everything straight and even. I'm so excited about this quilt. I really love it. I kind of wish I had used a pretty yellow thread on here and bring out more of this yellow, but I wanted to make sure that there were parts that you could really see the thread choice. And there was so much black on the quilt, I knew the white would show up nicely there. But that is a fun thing to think about when you get to the point of quilting is what thread color would work best. Is it best to just, you know, let it blend in or do you want it to stand out and be a focal point of your quilt? You could really add a lot of detail to your quilt when quilting with even thread color choice. So after this, I'm going to iron up that fabric that I'm using and I'm not gonna film ironing this time around. So what we're going to do is meet back here to cut some more. So we're gonna cut up those strips and then I'll show you how 
we're going to sew them together. And there are actually two different ways to create binding strips. Well, two different ways to sew them together. And I think both ways are pretty easy, but if you sew your strips together on the diagonal, they lay a little bit flatter along the edge of your quilt because there's not a lot of built up seam there. But I'm just going to show you how to sew them together with straight lines. It's a little bit easier and I feel like for a uh, beginner quilt, I think that's the best way to go. Um, it's a little less intimidating and then when you get to the end and have sewn all the way around your quilt, it's a lot easier to bring the two binding ends together if you just are doing a straight seam. Now, I am going to do a tutorial showing how to bind the other way um, with bringing your binding strips together on the diagonal. It just won't be in this video. I'm just going to show the easiest possible way to do things in this tutorial. Okay, that wasn't too bad, was it? Pretty fast. Pretty, pretty fast. All right, so I'm going to iron that up and then we are going to um, cut our strips. Okay, so when I cut binding strips, I always cut mine to two and a half inches. So to do that, I'm going to do the same steps that I did in the cutting tutorial I shared recently. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold my fabric in half and I'm going to make sure that I have the folded end up here along a straight line on my cutting mat. Okay, and I always cut my binding strips the width of the fabric. So, again, I like to have my cutting mat in a place where I can move it around, um, like turn it if I need to so I don't have to lift up the fabric. And the first thing I always do is straighten up one of my edges. So I'm going to run along the edge here. And if you see, I line this up straight with a line on my ruler as well. Okay. All right. So we have one side straightened out and I'm going to need to straighten out this end here as well. So I'm going, since this is a lot longer, I really should have folded it over and cut four at the same time, but I have another ruler. So we're just going to wing this as we straighten up this end. So I'm going to run both of them together. Make sure it's straight. I'm going to need to try to hold both of these firmly. I'm going to let go of the first one since I'm past it and it all worked out fine. Okay. So we have those two ends squared off. I think I counted that I'm going to need seven strips to cover my quilt. So I'm going to cut eight just to be safe. So I always like to have more just to ensure that I'm not short as I get to sewing this binding on. So what I'm doing is I'm getting a straight line on my ruler here. I'm getting a line at the two and a half mark down the edge here. And then this is where I'm going to cut. And since I have all these lines lined up, I know that my binding strip is going to be nice and straight. So I am going to move my first strip to the side. I'm not going to move this over. I don't want to shift, shift the fabric if I can help that at all. So again, I'm going to line up all the lines I possibly can straight with the fabric 
the top side down here at two and a half inches over and cut my strip. So now I have two strips. Okay, and I'm gonna keep doing the same thing. Three strips, so I'm gonna keep working until I have eight strips of binding. Okay, so now that we have all of our binding strips cut, we are going to sew them together end to end. And what you're gonna do is make sure right sides are facing together on your first two strips. Line them up at your sewing machine, and we're going to sew a quarter inch seam along the short side of the binding strips. Okay, and so after you sew your quarter inch seam, you're gonna to wanna to trim your threads and you're going to, after we finish sewing all the strips together end to end, we're gonna press these seams open on each time they meet. But for now, we're just gonna sew all of these together end to end. So I'm gonna grab my next strip of fabric, make sure they're right sides facing together, and we're going to sew the next one. And like I said, we're just doing a quarter inch seam. After we're finished sewing all these together, we're gonna to press all the seams open, and then we are, are going to fold the binding strip in half, the right side facing out, and press and press it folded. So I'll show that since we haven't done that yet. Um, but like I said, right now we are just going to sew all these together and then we will meet at the ironing board and I will show you pressing the seams open and we will fold the binding strips in half and press it as well. Okay, so we have this long, long, long row of binding and we're going to be pressing our seams open so we're just gonna pull this along here until we find a seam there we go okay so there is a seam here and normally i would just press the seams to the side but here on the binding we want it to lay really flat so you're gonna just get that seam open and it can be a little tough since it's just a small quarter inch seam. Not my favorite part. You could just sew these together like with a bigger seam allowance um, to make it a little easier to press open. If you absolutely can't, it's not, um, it's not completely necessary, it'll just help this binding lay a little bit flatter. Okay, so you're gonna go through, like I said, this is a long, find your seams. This one's gonna be a little bit easier because I sewed it better. <laughs> Sometimes that'll happen, there we go. So just go through and do that to all of your seams and then we are going to fold this um, binding in half and iron it again. Okay, so now that we have all of our seams pressed open, we're going to fold our binding in half and we're going to press it. So iron across the whole length of the binding while it's folded. Okay, it's going to take you a little bit of time and you may 
burn your fingers. I have done that quite a bit of times, pressing seams and um, making binding. So you may end up with battle wounds just as I have, but this is a necessary step and it's one of those things where this too shall pass. So before you know it, you'll be at the end of your row. I like to put on some good music while I do this or listen to an audio book. It'll help your time pass during this task. So just keep working along it just like this and get it all ironed up. You can do it. I promise you're almost there. Okay, so we have our binding roll all ready to go. I like to roll mine up. And what we are going to do is sew this binding onto the back of our quilt. Now, you're going to want the rough edge of the binding against the edge of your quilt. And that means the folded edge is going to be facing the inside of your quilt. You won't want to start sewing right at the end of your binding because you're going to want to attach them together when you wrap all the way around the quilt to the other side. <clears throat> so you're going to want to leave a nice chunk, maybe about a foot. And we're also not going to start right at the corner of our quilt. We're going to start a ways away because you don't want to, um, you don't want to start binding right at the edge of the quilt because you got to kind of do some fancy turns and things like that at the ends of your, at the corners of your quilt. So again, when you're sewing on the binding, you're going to want to, um, adjust your quilt however you can to make sure that it's not pulling off of your sewing surface, your table, or anything like that. And you're going to want to do a quarter inch seam. So I'm going to drop my presser foot and my needle. And I want to show you one of the tools that I mentioned that I like a lot for binding. So it I mentioned it in my supplies blog post, but it's called a stiletto. Now, when I'm sewing along with my binding, I like to use it as well to help keep the fabric from moving around. And when I say that, I mean this binding may want to stretch on you. And although you want it to be nice and flush with your fabric, you don't want it to pull too much. If you've um, applied binding onto a quilt before and your corners wanted to curl or pull up, it's likely because your binding was getting pulled too tight and that is what is pulling your corners up. So what I do is as I sew along, I will press down on my stiletto to keep those two pieces of fabric together. Well, I guess it's not two because it's the backing fabric binding under here and the top of our quilt, but to keep everything together and not pulling too much, I will place my stiletto down firmly. So I'll sew along like this. And as my stiletto gets up to the foot, I'll adjust, make sure the binding is nice and straight with the edge of my quilt. I'll place the stiletto back down and I'll move along some more. So I've noticed that this obviously does take a little more time than just, you know, putting it on here and sewing along. But if I do this, if I just sew along, can you see how the fabric kind of starts to bunch up? This is why the stiletto has been a game changer for me because it keeps everything nice and flat and I don't have that bunched up fabric happening at my presser foot because what happens is, is when I, when I turn here to turn my binding around later and bring it to the front. And so that's what gets all those weird crinkles and turning of your fabric. And that's why your binding doesn't lay nicely on the other side. 
maybe not the only reason, but I've noticed that it is one of them. So while this does take a bit longer, I think it's well worth it taking the time to adjust your binding and feed along. Now, maybe this has never been an issue for you and that's great and awesome and you already have your own way of doing this. Maybe you prefer pinning your binding on and sewing along that way and that keeps it in place then if that's what works for you that's what works for you and if you haven't tried pinning your binding on and want to and see if that works for you then go for it i like this way this method has worked really well for me on my last couple quilts so this is just the way that i feel comfortable doing this portion of binding so I'm gonna sew along here until I get to a corner and then I'll show you how I work my corners. Okay, so we're getting to the corner here of the quilt. Now, this is going to be one of the hardest parts of binding the quilt is the corners. So you're going to want to sew until you're a quarter inch from the corner. So I know about where that is on my um, on my foot. So I know when the needle needs to stop. It's right at the end of the foot down here, the solid part. But if you don't feel comfortable with that, what you can do is mark on the corner a quarter inch at the corner and mark a dot or something there so you know where to start. And then you're going to want to draw a line to the corner. And you'll see why in just a minute. Okay, so we're going to stop where the point of my stiletto is and then we are going to turn the fabric and sew to the end. The corner here. Okay, so let's continue on here. Grab my stiletto. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit slow and I got one more stitch and I should be good. Okay, so I'm going to lift up my presser foot and turn the fabric to where it is facing me. The corner of the quilt is facing directly towards me. I'm gonna drop the presser foot back down and I'm going to sew towards me to the point of the quilt. Okay, so I'm gonna sew right off there, lift up the foot and the needle and pull this out. So, let's see if you can see how that looks. Can you see that there? So, this is where I was sewing straight down. And then when we got a quarter inch to the edge, we came toward the corner and sewed off. Okay? Now the reason we're doing that is because this is what's going to make our nice pretty corners. Okay, because what we're going to do, I'm going to turn the fabric here because I want this side facing me because we're going to start going in this other direction now. So what we're going to do now is lift this fabric up at an angle. Okay, we want it coming up straight here, and then we're going to fold it down toward us. And now we're going to be sewing along this side. Now, you could place a pin here so that this doesn't move when you start sewing again 
that'll help keep everything straight. So again, we went, we brought this straight up and then brought it back down. It's folded here. When I get to the next corner, I'll show this again and try to do it at a better angle so maybe you can see it better. But I'm gonna bring this back under my presser foot and I'm gonna start right at the edge there and sew along this side of the quilt. Take that needle out and let's go. Okay, so we're almost to the corner again. And like I said, we want to stop a quarter inch from it, which would be where I'm marking my fabric. Oh, that's a little bit farther because my chalk's so thick right now. So up here, and then we're going to come at the corner of the quilt at an angle. Okay, so we're gonna sew to the edge, stop a quarter inch from the edge, turn our quilt and sew at toward the corner of the quilt. Okay, so let's go along here. We're going to sew here to the point of my stiletto and then sew along where my stiletto is. I wish I had chosen a contrasting fabric here for the binding because I feel like this blends in so much that it's really hard to see what I'm saying. Okay, so there is the edge of my quilt. I want to come like one more turn. And now I'm going to turn the fabric and I'm going to sew to the corner of my quilt right here. Okay, now let's lift up the needle and take a little bit better look at what we did if we can. This is really, really hard to show on camera. Okay, so we sewed along here, a quarter inch seam, turned and came to the corner. Now, what we're gonna do now is lift our binding up. Okay, and we want it at a nice 45 degree angle to the corner of the quilt. Okay and then we're going to fold it back down to us because we're going to sew along that side again. See how it's nice and even with the edge of the quilt there? So I'm gonna place a pin so it stays in place for me when I come up to start sewing a quarter inch seam across the edge here again. Now, this is one step that really helps me get nice corners and a nice binding is sewing on this back um, this back nice and even using the stiletto and all those things but I have two other steps to show you after getting this on that have really 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 been a game changer for me in getting nice bindings on my quilt so since I've shown the corners to you twice I'm going to go ahead and finish this off and when I get to meeting the other end of the binding that we started with, I will show you how to take care of that. So let's get this on and we'll meet back then. Okay, so I sewed back around to the end here and we have some ends hanging off. So what I did was I drew a line here to show me where I want to cut down this strand 
because it's way too long. It goes all the way to the end. Um, so you can do that with the rotary cutter. I'm just going to trim it off with scissors there because it's just that one piece. So I'm going to trim this down. Okay. And then this overlap, I need to measure a half inch from this piece that we cut. So all I did was put this on here, a half an inch from this overlap. And I know it's hard for you guys to see, I'm sorry. So I did a little more than I needed to when I marked my line before. So right there. So I'm going to cut this top fabric there and I'm doing a half an inch because we're going to have a quarter inch seam from each of them when we sew these together. Okay. So I'm going to cut that off and I'm going to show you guys in just a minute how we're going to sew these two seam, the, these two binding strips together. Okay. So we're going to cut along here. And then we're going to bring right sides together. And then we are going to sew along here. Okay. So meet me at the sewing machine and we're going to sew these. Okay. So this is why it is so important to give yourself enough room and not sew too close to where the binding meets because it is really hard, even with the amount of room I left, to juggle this under the machine. So give yourself room. And since we just left a half inch overlap, we're going to be still sewing that quarter inch seam. Still trying to get this to lay nice for me because you want it nice and straight and even. I should have just left it alone with how it was because it really was fine. I thought I could get it straighter and now look at me, I'm a mess. Sometimes you just need to leave well enough alone. Okay, so let's sew down this. And then we're going to see how nicely it fits together. Hopefully we did a good job. Okay. So let's see. Yep. It lays nice and flat. It doesn't pull. So one thing you may want to do is take that seam to the sewing machine or to, to the sewing machine, to the iron and iron it out. I'm just going to press finger press it. Um, and actually on the other end of my stiletto is a press. And so I'm going to just press it open with that instead of having to get up and head to my sewing machine, get that to lay nice and flat. And this looks good through here. So all you would do is sew a quarter inch seam down the rest of it. And then I will meet you at my ironing board because I'm going to show you what I do to make this binding look nice and professional. It's a step that I always do now. So let's meet over there and do that. Okay. You guys, we are in the home stretch. So one of the things I like to do is quickly iron my binding up and away from the inside of the quilt. Now see these beautiful corners here that we made by doing that little trick. Now I don't iron those down. I just iron all the way up to them, but go along and it doesn't take long and just iron it over. I feel like it lays so much nicer if you take this step. And it's such a quick step to make sure that 
your binding lays nice. So if you're gonna take the time to make such a beautiful quilt, I feel like you might as well do these extra steps to make sure everything comes together really nicely. Okay, so we will meet still here at the ironing board after we get all of this pushed open. Okay, so I think the hardest part now is going to be folding your corners. So this is partly why I love these wonder clips. So I'm going to fold this down and iron. Okay, so got that and then I'm going to place a clip. Okay, and then I'm going to place one a little closer because I want everything to hold together well. So now I'm going to take this side and you're going to kind of want to pinch it here at the edge. You could place your stiletto there and fold it over to where these meet. Okay, let's tuck those strings in. Now I'm going to hold my finger there and get my iron. Now I only really iron at the corners because I'm just trying to get that nice turn. Okay, so pinch there, turn it up. And once you get your corner looking nice, place a clip right on it, okay? So do you see that, how it meets nicely there? And then I'll just place a couple more of these wonder clips along to help hold everything in place. So I'm going to get all my corners like that. And then the rest of it, I'll put a few wonder clips along just to keep everything nice and laying flat, but I'm mainly worrying about the corners. Okay, so let's get this corner and then we'll meet at the sewing machine to bind, to bind this quilt or finish binding it because we have been working on the binding. So I'm going to iron down this binding strip here on top. And then I'm going to place two wonder clips. I love these clips for doing binding. Okay. And then here we're going to fold this over. I pinch right at the edge, get it nice and firm, get that corner good. And then I place a clip on this side. So if you don't have wonder clips, I'm sure you could use something like, uh, you know, pins or, um, you know, something like that would work. And this isn't necessary. I see tons of people bind quilts without doing this step. This just, it is longer, do not get me wrong, but it's, it's the way that I can get my binding to look really good. So I'm just going to go along and place clips and I'll iron down if it's, if it feels like I need to, but I'm just going to keep placing clips along here. I mainly only need, feel like I need to iron my corners. Um, but if it really doesn't seem like it wants to lay flat, then I'll iron a little bit along as well. So I might just hit it a little bit here and here make sure it's going to lay flat when I feed it through my sewing machine. So just go along, get your blinding laying nicely, get your corners good, and then we'll meet back at the sewing machine. Okay, so when we sew our binding, we want to be, oh my quilt just all fell <laughs> off the table. Oh. Again, this is still the part that is the hardest. <laughs> so, um, so when we're sewing on our binding, we're going to want to be as close to the edge as we can get 
because if you're sewing way over here, this end's just gonna keep flipping up and it's not gonna lay nice and flat. So we wanna be as close to the edge as we can, but still on there. So I am using um, this foot number 10 with Bernina again. I need to look up the name of it. I use it a lot to stitch in the ditch, but I like it here um, because I can keep the end, this groove here lined up with the side of my binding and then set my needle to be right to the side of that. So I'll show you that in a minute. I need to scoot a little closer so I can see. All right, so I'm not right at the, I'm not on the corner. I'm right at it, but I'll show you. If you can't see where we're at on the binding. So we're actually doing pretty good. I love this number 10 foot for this. It really helps me keep everything lined up nice. So, I'm not sure if you can see there. So we're right at the edge. We don't have enough room to really flip up that much so it's gonna lay nice and flat. All right, so I'm gonna keep sewing down until I get to a corner and I'll show you how you work those. Okay, so we're coming up on a corner here and I have my trusty stiletto back out. And honestly, this is just gonna be that you need to sew really slowly and use your stiletto to keep everything in place. If you don't have a stiletto, then you're gonna have to use your fingers and a lot of prayer. And I'm not joking. <laughs> Cause it really sucks when you worked hard getting these corners and it all falls apart. Okay, so I just got on to this piece of binding that's coming this way. So I'm gonna keep my needle down, hold here, and turn. And you'll see that if I got to the right place, when I put my foot back down, it'll be lined up at the edge of the binding again. Okay, so. Oh, uh, it looks like I let go. Oh no, it's pretty good. It looks like I let go of my corner too soon, but it looks good. So I'll, I'll get you in there to see a look of it when I come down a little bit farther. So we're just gonna sew along here. So here is the corner. So it still meets there. Did turn a little bit here, but the corners still meet nicely. So that is good. Okay. And as I'm sewing, I'm seeing that the problem that I would often have if I didn't take the time to do all these wonder clips and things like that. Ugh lift this up if I didn't do all the wonder clips and iron the back of this binding down I would be getting a lot of twists and turns in my binding but it's laying really really flat so let's get down to the next corner Keep on sewing along. Okay, we are about to the last corner of the quilt. So we're gonna sew up to where the two fabrics meet at the corner. Gonna keep your stiletto or your finger up there to keep it in place. And sew just till that needle hits the next one. 
the next fabric on the fold. Turn and the middle of your presser foot should meet up with the fabric on this side. And then we're going to finish. There's just the tiniest bit left to sew. I cannot believe how quickly this came together. If you tried making a quilt like this one, you're going to have to let me know how this tutorial worked out for you. I love this method of putting a quilt together with the layer cake pre-cuts. So there we go. We are all finished. Let's take a better look at it. Okay, you guys, here is our finished quilt. It is gorgeous. I'm so happy with it. I hope you all had fun quilting with me. And I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and check out any more crafting videos I have. Thanks, you guys. Bye.